alive, Jake. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Big Chin Show with your co-host, Jake Anthony Simmons. Today, we are talking about space. But what comes from space? <laughs> What comes from space? That is a real question. We know that there are other planets, light years away, other cosmos, whatever the heck those things are. Who knows? Here's my dog, Finley. Hello, Finley. But mainly, the thing we're talking about from space that people cannot agree on is Aliens. Today, we are talking about aliens. Are they real? Are they not real? You'll find out today. Personally, to Jake and I, they are real. And you'll find out why. We might convince you, we may not. We'll show you some videos. Um, but mainly, that's what we're going to talk about today, is just aliens. Nothing else in the universe. Because we don't really know anything about the universe, do we? No. This music, killer. Really gets you in the mood. <laughs> Alright. Enough of this music. So as you know, my name's Big Tuna. This is Jake. I don't really have a nickname for him. Because <laughs> most of the nicknames just make fun of how skinny you are. So it's kind of rude. I won't say it. <laughs> I have like six in my head. Sam. Twigs, sticks. That's about it. So mean. I know. I love you too. Jake and I are dating. Just kidding, we're not false accusations. Negative. We're just best friends for 12 years. <laughs> 12 years. Wow, what a time. Anyway, you might hear us speaking Canadian accents today, but that's all right. All right, to start off with the podcast, let's recap on our week. You know, have a little recap. I'll start off since you're doing some research. Okay. <clears throat> So, how was my week? My week was my week was good. Um, I didn't go surfing a lot this week, which was fine. You know, it's kind of nice to sleep in. I felt so tired this week. Like I felt so good just to catch up <laughs> on my sleep. Also, um, yeah, it was a good week practice for the. Uh, boys that I coach was really good this week. Got in the water as well. That was a lot of fun. One day. Um, and then, other than that, this week looking up, looking upon, probably surfing tomorrow. Maybe sun, maybe tonight. Don't know yet. It's not raining. Yeah, if it's not raining. I'm gonna guess it might continue. And then, <clears throat> this week's going to be a pretty chill week. we got Halloween coming up next weekend. That'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. Halloween kind of gets boring when you get older. You know? It's boring. Yeah. You can't really, I mean, you can dress up. You just run out of, you run out of, of you run out of ideas. You know? Yeah. You Actually. Be, you can only be a ghost for one year in a row. I kind of had a good idea for my costume. Yeah. Just a bunch of colors, since I can't see any of them. You can see some of them. Yeah. That's a great costume, though. Yeah. Jake, how's your week? <clears throat> Hold it just, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
my away. Uh, I'm going to slow. There's a mosquito over there. I'm going to try to suck up your blood. Uh, that was pretty good. I didn't really do anything. I started my paper for history. I was really deciding on having someone do it for me. So I just paid him to do it for me because I was really lazy. But I decided to start it. So. Uh, I'm just busy with school. It's midterm weeks, so uh, wow. it's the best time ever. I still have broken wrists, so I can't surf. And uh, work is all right. Can't complain. Just trying to uh, move day by day, I guess. So that is all for me. Back to you, Eden. Thank you. You're welcome. Brian King texted us. Let's see what he said. He said weather was kind of crappy. I agree. He is right. Uh, the election. Did you vote yet? No. I will. <sighs> Tick. Tic Tac UFO. This is such a great video. Okay. USS Nimitz. Yes, indeed. Alright. Let's start it, since we're just delaying the inevitable. What a long intro. Seven minutes to be exact. Oh. Alright. So, most people, well, where should we start this? Stop yawning. Oh, I'm tired, man. You need a Gatorade or something? In breakfast. I have goldfish. No. Alright. Well, I guess I can start this off by Jake came up to me one day. He said, dude, aliens are real. <laughs> I said, no way. He said, yeah, I'm going to send you this podcast. I said, okay. How long is it? He's like, two hours. I was like, alright. And for those who complain that my podcast is long, please, Joe Rogan's are like four hours long. But they are informative. And he has good guests. He just had Kanye on yesterday. Kanye is our future president. Negative. Positive. Anyway, so Jake sends me the podcast. The podcast happens to be with a man who's very famous back in the 80s. His name's Bob Lazar, B-O-B-L-A-Z-A-R, not Laser, Lazar. So Bob Lazar was a man who worked 15 miles from, <laughs> he, worked, he worked with, he worked 15 miles from area S4. Or no, from he area, at S4. Sorry, he worked 15 miles from Area 51, yeah. which is a real place. It's not a myth. It's in the middle of Vegas Desert. Bob worked at Area S4, which <laughs> um, Area S4 was, what was it? S4? Yeah. S4 was for like Specifically UFO related I, uh, work. Yeah. Like, like 51 has all the. I'll use the mic. Um, Area 51 has all the government documents and it's also a base, an Air Force base. So they do a lot of testing as in like technology there, but Area S4 is mainly for. UFO related content. So I believe there's four UFOs there. When it was it was nineteen eighties, right? Yeah, so nineteen eighties when Bob Lazar was there. There were four UFOs. There was nine. Nine. There are nine UFOs. That's a lot more than four. Five more. Um in the hangars at S4. And S4 is hidden on the map. It's 
dug into the side of a hill and then camouflaged so no one knows about it. But there's nine UFOs there and pretty much the whole basis of that base was to understand and um, reverse engineer the UFO, UFOs to get anti-gravity and just how they work and figure out that technology because if we had technology like that, they'd probably use it to like, I don't know, over just like for power in the world and stuff. They were like war, but they're trying to like reverse engineer all these UFOs, but pretty much uh, Belbazar uh, went to S4 and he, he worked on these UFOs and, and the people who worked there, they all had spe specific tasks and they weren't allowed to like talk to the other um, co-workers. Mm -hmm. So they all got their own specific task and they were supposed to do this certain thing and nothing else. Like, and they couldn't see anything else. They couldn't like do anything else except that one task. So Bob's, Bob's job was to reverse engineer the reactor, I'd say. I don't even know what it would be called. It's not even an engine, but yeah. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. So Bob, before working at S4, he worked at Los Alamitos Air Base, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Whatever it's called. Yeah, and he worked mainly there with nuclear nuclear weapons, um, and then that's where he built his famous car, which was um, rocket powered. Yeah, he basically legit put a rocket power rocket powered engine in his Honda and drove it to work every single day, and it went over two hundred miles an hour, and they. Posted it in the front page of his, of the Los Alamitos, um, no, the Los Alamos. Alamos. Yeah, sorry, Los Alamos, which is in New Mexico. Uh, they posted in the front page of the paper, and there was a lecture going on at the base where he was at, and they weren't doing that much that day, so he went down to see the guy who they were lecturing, and I forgot his name, and, um, he met him and he said, oh, that's me on the front page you're reading about. And the guy, a few months later, whatever, he got a, re a letter saying, hey, would you like to come work at Area S4? And he got an interview and um, basically they, he got hired for it. Um, and so he'd always have to go to an Air Force base first, and then uh, he'd always have to go to, what's it called? Yeah. Oh well. He went to an Air Force base, some airport they got. Then he'd fly into Area S4, and I think it was like, his first day on the job was just a bunch of paperwork, and then eventually uh, he met his lab partner, his name was Barry, and this is all true facts that we're saying, okay? Facts. If you want to see his interview with Joe Rogan, I'll put a recommendation on the video. He's got a book and a movie also. And he has a movie on Netflix, Bob Lazar. Flying Saucers. Flying Saucers and UFOs on Netflix. Yeah. You can watch it. Pretty good. <clears throat> um, he has a book as well. I haven't read that because I don't really like to read. So he meets his lab partner, Barry. And basically, Bob's job is to work on this reactor. And basically, the reactor that he's working on is going to power the UFOs that are in the hangars at S4 where he's working. <clears throat> so one day he's working on them and uh, Barry said, go ahead, try and move your hands toward the center of the, of the reactor. So Bob tried 
and the reactor pushed away his hands. And in the podcast with Joe Rogan, Bob said that the reactor had its own gravitational field, which is impossible because that shouldn't happen. And Bob clearly said that this couldn't be U.S. owned because we don't have the technology to do that yet. Um, since they were back in the 80s, the late 80s. And another interesting factoid is that they discovered um, Lazar examined an alien craft or UFO that ran on antimatter um, that was powered by element 115. Now, you want to speak on this? Yeah. You want to look up antimatter? Sure. So people will understand. So while well, it looks up antimatter, so you guys will understand what that is. Um, element 115 has not been found on this earth ever. It's never been mined. It's never been. It's never come out of volcanoes. It's never been formed in any, anything. Element 115 was a new material that they found from the UFOs, and. You okay? Yeah, I have antimatter. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, yeah, so when they found out that there was a new element and it only came from something that didn't come from Earth, then they knew that, well, well. Huh? I don't even know what I was going to say. But element 115 is out of the world. And... Yeah. So when they discovered element 115, and later it was discovered, I believe, in 2016, that they rediscovered it, per se. And it only, when they rediscovered it, only lasted for a couple seconds because of how unstable the, the element is. But back in the 80s, they didn't even know what the heck it was. And element 115 is classified, it's now on the period table. Peri periodic table. Um, Moscovium. Moscovium is a synthetic chemical agent with a symbol MC, atomic number of 115. It was first synthesized in 2003 by a joint team of Russian and American scientists at the Joint Institute uh, for Nuclear Research. In December 2015, it was recognized as one of four new elements by the Joint Working Party of International Science Bodies and on November 2016, it was officially named after the Moscow Oblast in the JINR is situated. It is a very radioactive element. Uh, its most stable and known isotope is Muscovium-290. has a half-life of 0.65 seconds. So... When they discovered this back in the 80s, they had no idea what it was. It couldn't have come from the Earth because no one discovered it yet. So it had, the only way it made sense to Bob and everyone else was that it was from the UFOs and from outer space because it was found nowhere else on this Earth. An antimatter definition. Oh, nice. Thanks. Our molecules formed by atoms consisting of antiprotons, anti antineutrons, and potastrons, something like that. Some science, man. Yeah. <laughs> Stable antimatter does not appear to exist in our universe. Keyword universe. Aliens. They exist. So, back to Bob. Right. One day, he goes out to the hangars, and they're all open. All the side doors, everything. He looks down the row. There's nine different UFO, UFOs, different shapes and sizes. Uh, so he goes in to the UFO that his reactor is supposed to work with. And Bob Lazar is like 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 decent height, normal height for a guy. Um, and he goes in and he can't stand up straight 
anywhere in the UFO except the direct center is where you can stand up straight. Everything in there is super bland, bland coloring, no screens whatsoever like we would have in the U.S. with our planes and stuff. Uh, there's three seats around the dead center where the reactor goes. And then there's three, I guess, tablets, you could say, is what he described in the podcast with Joe Rogan. And, uh, but everything was very, very small. He said someone would have to be half his height to fit in there. So, three foot. Three foot. Or shorter. Or shorter. So, definitely either a very small person or an alien. Mainly an alien. Midgets can fit too. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, and he just said everything was super weird. And then on another day, they had a <laughs> test flight for it. And basically the test flight was just a basic one. And um, it would just go up very quietly. And then he moved it left and right. And then it set back down. And then eventually he got invited to watch. Well, he didn't really get invited. He scheduled a more advanced flight, which was they went above the mountain ranges in the Nevada desert. And he brought, he went out three separate times with a group of friends. And he filmed it. You can look up this video. It's not that great because it's in the 80s. Um, you can look it up. It's online somewhere. I forgot what it was called, but I watched it. It's pretty cool. So he brought his group of friends. They all agreed that they wouldn't talk about it to anyone because you weren't allowed to. It's government. Yeah. It's a okay. top secret. Yeah. And if you do, you get into a lot of trouble. We'll get onto that in a yeah. second. So he brought out his group of friends. They all saw it. Um, they were amazed by how fast it moved and to be more exact when the UFO flies it flies belly up so imagine a car lifts up and then all four wheels are facing out and that's how it flies standing straight up that's how the UFO would fly it so would everyone thinks they fly like this but they really fly like they this. fly like this and that's how they move it's very weird strange nothing like um, any of our planes fly or any of our fighter jets fly um, and one day he was out there I think it was their third time out there and it was pitch black and one of there was a bunch of agents watching them because they knew they were out there with a the trailer everything and one of the agents dropped their flashlights and it rolled over to him and that's how they knew he the he got brought in for questioning, didn't get fired on the spot, which I was surprised, didn't go to jail or anything like that. But they monitored all his phone calls. Um, his wife thought he was having an affair. Um, a lot of bad stuff happened to Bob. They raided his house. Yeah, they raided his house during the filming of the Netflix film. Um, <clears throat> they would like follow him. Yeah, like like men in black, they'd like follow him in a car, like everywhere, everywhere. And so he got, he still gets a lot of hate. Um, people would camp out on his lawn just to talk to him. And it wasn't until he went on the news and told, uh, went on a news show and told the guy about, uh, what's his name? We can talk more. All right. Talk about some other stuff. Well, uh, I don't want to give any uh, spoiler alerts, but I'll just keep going off what Ian said. So he went onto the news and pretty much like admitted everything that he's seen and worked on and been through. And obviously, there's people that are like, there's no way this guy's telling the truth. He could just be any random guy on the news just saying whatever he wants. And then there's some people that. Want to know, like want to learn more and they want to know the truth, so they kind of dig into it more. And then his story is 
true and he'll go through all these lie detecting tests and he passes them every time because he's not lying. And yeah, there's more. There you go. Aiden. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. So the guy he was talking about on the news show was his name was George Knapp. Oh, he's a yeah. Uh, he's a very famous interviewer. He went to Skinwalker Ranch, which we'll get into as well. Uh, <clears throat> that's a scary place. Yeah. So George Knapp interviewed him, put him on the eleven o'clock news. His story gets out. He gets fired uh, immediately. All his friends that were connected to getting government jobs all got audited and they all got um, rejected for those jobs as well. And Bob was hoping more people would come out and tell their stories, but they wouldn't because they didn't want to get fired. So George Knapp made the interview. He interviewed Bob a bunch more times, helped create the documentary about him. Very cool stuff. Um, so that's a little bit about Bob. Bob was mainly the first guy to um, release release what? legit evidence. Art, evidence of alien um, UFOs, stuff like that. And also the reactor that he was working on in the <clears throat> uh, podcast with Joe Rogan, he said that the other eight reactors, some of them were found in archaeological times, which is pretty crazy. Um, so who knows how how long they've been on Earth? Jake has something to show you. The picture. <laughs> All right, without that glare, I'll I'll lift it up. So, oopsie daisies. Do that again. So here's a picture of the UFO that Bob Lazar was working on. And it looks like the normal ones that you'd see in movies or whatever, but it's got three childlike seats. Here are the reactors on the bottom. And then just this cone shape that you know normally people kind of think about when they see UFOs. So I thought it was kind of interesting and I thought I'd share. So yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you, Jake. You're welcome. Now you have some stuff about the 50s. <clears throat> I have 50s stuff? Yeah. What's in the 50s? FBI documents. Oh, yeah. So here you go. <clears throat> Alright, well, this one uh, I didn't do much research on, but I believe it because it came from FBI documents. And so pretty much I saw on TikTok, which is a very reliable place, if you didn't know. There's, everyone's always telling the truth there, so. Um, on TikTok, I saw that uh, released FBI documents of Nikola Tesla. And I don't know when they were released, but they were written in the 19, this one says June 14th, 1957. So, Nikola Tesla, let's go through his, what he invented, and what he was known for, so let me look it up really quick. Nikola Tesla. What's he known for? Inventions. He invented the Tesla coil. Um, okay, let's say serving inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and futurist. Best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current. Electricity supply system. It's a lot of words. Um, so, he was pretty much known for electricity and kind of inventing and creating a lot of the things that we use today, honestly. But um, from this document, it, so once Nikola Tesla died, the FBI immediately took all his all those documents that were, were in his house and just like confiscated it from everyone. They took everything. And to me that seemed kind of sus. Like why would they want his his stuff? Why would they want it? So I did some research on it and uh, this says here, okay, so Margaret Storm was like an assistant to Nikola Tesla. Um, 
They say that they've been working with space people. Uh, space people as in aliens? I think so. Because what else would they be? Who knows what? Who knows what they're working with? Who's, who's, what space people are these people? So, um, it says, Tesla died in 43, and his engineer did not build the Tesla until after his death. It was placed in operation in 1950, and since that time, the Tesla engineers have been in close touch with spaceships. In close touch with spaceships. They've been in close touch with spaceships. So, they're communicating somehow with extraterrestrial beings. Um, the space people have visited Tesla engineers many times and have told us that with Mr. and Mrs. Tesla in a remote mountain province of what is now oh, Yugoslavia. So this little paragraph just first tells us that Tesla, um, the engineers have been in touch with space people, quotes, quote that. And this is coming from an FBI document. So this is definitely um, high intelligence information that they didn't want to share. Um, where to go? And then the second big thing that I I found, which I can't find on here, because it's like 20 pages long, was that Nikola Tesla was a Venetian, which means he comes from Venus. So. If I ever find it, I'll talk about it, but, so listen to this. If Nikola Tesla came from Venus and worked to create electronic, like electricity here, then he kind of kick-started that movement of, that he had information in his mind that would be extraterrestrial. If he wasn't from this world and was creating electricity or creating inventions that no one else in his time created, that he was definitely more ahead of his age for knowing that he wasn't from Earth. He was a Venetian. So let's look it up, Google. Nikola Tesla, Venetian. Nikola Tesla seems to have inherited the intelligence of his mother in a super, super related way. Is your family? Okay, and then where you can find this stuff is from the FBI vault. And it has, the FBI, FBI vault has a ton of information that was hidden for a long time. And they all, this one came out in 03, so I don't know why they released some or when they released some or what their means is to release. It's just about time to like learn the truth, and um, I wish I could find it. I wish I had it up, but yeah. Yeah. just pause it, come back to it. Right. Nikola Tesla spent fifty years of his life trying to find a way to communicate with Mars. Believe how? How many? Tesla believed that Mars was inhabited by the intelligent Martians and had a civilization as evidenced by the canals and red planet Mars. He was trying to talk to the aliens. I wish I could find them in the ancient part. And it says, there's like a paragraph that said that he was from Mars. I mean, Venus. Like a whole paragraph. This is so long. Well, that's all I got for now, so I want to comment later, but if you want to do your own research, you can look up uh, vault.fbi.gov. Nikola Tesla. That's it. And it's 64 pages long, so good luck. And it's from uh, 1943, so it's really uh, just like a messy document. But. It's proof that the government was hiding stuff, and they still are hiding stuff from us. And, uh, yeah. Now I'm just talking, because I'm talking, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. All right, back to you, Aiden. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. My cleaning lady has to clean.
my living room, which is totally fine. Maybe we'll pick back up in my room. Okay. We'll see you guys soon.